This might just be the best buy I made in 2024. Replace my ancient dusty monitor with an epic portable monitor. It's fully plug and play, requiring only USB-C and HDMI connectivity. So you can diagnose your non-posting systems with these. But for now, let's have a look at our Lenovo M920Q Tiny Mini PC, connected up to a light portable touchscreen USB-C monitor. I mean, you could even connect this up to an eGPU build. Wait, can a mini PC even power a USB monitor? I mean, this thing's got like a 45 watt power supply. The uh, Samsung 4K monitor has got a 60 watt power supply, so surely there's no way the little mini PC can power a screen. Well, I guess we'll find out shortly, and uh, stay tuned for a future video where we will go through that monitor. So sit back and relax as we unbox what is the coolest little monitor you could possibly buy. This is a plug and play monitor. Dare I say a must have monitor, you'll see it on almost all my future videos. Requires no external power, it does need USB and HDMI connectivity, and finally a simple product name. Check it out, it's called Monitor. I definitely get along with that, it's very easy to pronounce. Hopefully that continues as we unbox the rest of this uh, very, very nicely packaged. Oh, that was short lived. I'm going to butcher it. Is it Higfriti? That's a tough uh, branding name there, but Higfriti, we'll call it Higfriti. And uh, check this out. There is our monitor. Good to see some nice protective film on there protecting it during transport. And uh, oh, that's quite nice. We've got a VESA monitor mount, 75 by 75 mil, which will allow us to connect this to an external stand, which is pretty cool if you were that way inclined. But it also has its own little foldable stand which has quite a bit of rigidity to it, so it should be quite sturdy. Now, screen resolution, technically, this is a 1200p monitor, so slightly bigger than your 1080p. It does have over 16 million colors and quite a decent brightness. I think they quote it around 300 nits, so decent. 60 hertz, IPS, touch functionality. I mean, this is exactly what you could be looking for. Now, very important on the cabling front, we do need an HDMI to HDMI mini that's going to be our primary display cable. Very important as well, the HDMI end will go into your GPU and the HDMI mini will plug into our screen. So a little bit of directionality. Here's the manual. Normally I would just throw these away, but should we read this one? Okay, I'm going to actually give them some credit here because it's printed in color. I feel like more manufacturers can take note of that. I actually do approve of the color printing. It's actually pretty well laid out. It's not just me, right? That actually looks fairly well organized. Uh, I will say, I haven't actually managed to find the menu on the screen, so maybe I should actually invest in uh, actually reading this manual. Oh, check it out. You can actually fit this to certain phones as well to serve as an additional monitor for your phone. Man, that's going to make it pretty cool. So you may want to read that uh, in a little bit more detail. We say I have this little brochure, which does go through all the essentials in a fairly concise manner. I'll give them an 8 out of 10. That's a fairly impressive manual. Next cable in our list. This is our USB-C to USB-C cable, which I do believe will be the primary power source for this little screen when not connected to its power brick. We'll go through the power brick in a second. An additional USB to USB 3.0 cable, always handy depending on your device. And here's that uh, rather infamous power brick. Now, this will be my first point of complaint. It's not removable. Being in New Zealand, I do have the AU design plug, and uh, that's not going to be of any use to me unless I get a little adapter to convert it. But it's not a big deal because, well, it doesn't actually need external power, which is the greatest part about this little screen. So I guess we should try and connect this up to see what it's like. So let's get all this waste out of the way oh wait we should always check for that secret compartment you just never know what they're hiding away in this case there's nothing there that's okay a little bit disappointing after all the presents over christmas as well okay let's have a look at the uh, exterior dimensions so being a 16 inch monitor pretty decent size we do have a very slimline design actually and overall very very aesthetic a little bit of carbon fiber look on the back we have three ports on that one side, one golden one, which would be your mini HDMI, and two USB-C ports. On the other side, we have our power button, a little toggle switch, and your 3.5mm audio jack. Take note, there are built-in speakers and an audio jack, if only your iPhone had that. Okay, the power brick looks rather entertaining. As I mentioned, you probably could find alternative ways to provide power to this particular screen. 
I have actually powered it for USB dock as well, so there are many options. Now the question is, can this mini PC, the M920Q, with its very, very powerful 45 watt power supply, actually drive this screen? Well, you're about to find out, and I'm kind of hopeful, because if this doesn't work, well, back to the drawing board. So let's find out. Okay, mini PC's powered. Nice LED light there to confirm it's uh, booted. Let's see if we can get some display. Now I'm hopeful it'll light up. Oh, there it is, cool. Okay, so it does light up just with the USB cable. Presumably that's the power. Now for the display. Yep, there it is. It's fully booted and it's looking for an input. Let's give it some HDMI action. Now this particular mini PC does have an HDMI port, which is really, really handy. And uh, you can actually expand it with other display inputs as well, like a display port. But there it is. We're powered up. We're in our operating system, Windows in this case. And right now we have the ability to do a little bit of testing. I mean, there's so many things you could do with this screen, but we need a keyboard. Check this out. Wireless keyboard. It's actually really, really cool. It's got a built-in trackpad. It's got a built-in battery. Can charge it via USB, fully rechargeable. Another really cool item to pair with your mini PC and or your home server. I mean, this is just like really, really easy. No cables, no mess. It's really great. Now I'm going to go to my favorite YouTuber. I've watched all of their videos several times. Uh, of course, it's my own channel. The joys of editing, but... Let's uh, load up a random video here, not meant to be a visual test by any means, but I mean that's looking half decent, right? Not, not saying my video footage is amazing, but that doesn't look too bad. Oh, definitely uh, consider checking out this video. We fit a 10 gigabit Ethernet card to this mini PC in a previous video. It's absolutely stellar. And uh, let's uh, switch off the lights a little bit and check out the full detail of the screen. Yeah, that's pretty decent. I could definitely get used to staring this one, especially at nighttime. Really, really nice watching some movies, perhaps. Now, uh, did I mention touch capabilities? Check it out. You could even handle this purely by touch. So this is practically a tablet plugged into your computer, but it's serving as a full display. That's really cool. Now, a couple of other things that we can do to do our, should we say, test of this monitor. I need to install a driver for that 10 gigabit NIC that we installed last video. So that's where I'm at right now catching up and very easy to do these driver installs as you can tell pretty good color accuracy on the monitor while we're here but all we need to do is go to intel's website find the appropriate driver there are a few options of course depending on your os and once we get that driver installed this 10 gigabit ethernet card should run now why would you want a 10 gigabit ethernet card well i mean i can't make this up but check this out this is connected with wi-fi right now i'm trying to watch a nice uh, video to demo how awesome the screen is but it's buffering that really annoys me in the modern age we don't have time for, and oh look at this it's just cut out as well the joys of uh, wi-fi but previously we also changed the thermal pace now we upgraded to thermal grizzly cryonaut and i'm quite keen to see how that thermal pace is doing and take note of the method that i use the spreader method with five dots to get even coverage of the ihs Let's check the temperatures. We're sitting at 46 degrees Celsius at idle and around 75 degrees at max. That's a pretty good result. Oh, yay, the video is loaded, finally. Okay, that looks good, but I'm not going to bore you with cinematics of an awesome looking car. Let's go to Signbench R23. How does the mini PC perform? Well, believe it or not, it got a score of 4,388, which is half decent. Now, what else would I use this screen for? Well, you're actually going to see it in a lot of future videos, like this Hantec 6074BE oscilloscope that allows me to monitor very, very precisely the circuitry within our electronics. We can measure the output signals of most pins or connections within our systems. Now, other ideal uses, I'm also going to use it in my future video where I'm going to test 29 thermal paste application methods to finally give us the answer what is the best method out there? And not just visual testing, we're also going to do some thermal testing to truly figure out what is the best method to use. And uh, it did require a little bit of engineering, not that uh, drilling holes is uh, pure engineering, but I had to actually create a visual masterpiece that had spring-loaded tension of even amounts on all four corners, so we actually get a fair test. Can't just slap it on there and assume it's going to work, we want to get a fair test on this. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be an amazing video. We're going to get the best possible answer for the best thermal pace application method. May make a few people angry, of course, because, I mean, it's highly a highly debated topic, correct? Well, well done there. You've made it through. 
I'm also going to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year since it is the festive season. Stay tuned. I'll see you on the next video. Oh, it's bright in here. Very bright.